Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Biopharma Podcast. Today, we have on our show, John Brown. John is a consultant with Amendo, and he is out of the North Carolina area. And um, he has done a bunch of work on commissioning and validation. We've had a couple good talks leading up to this. I'm excited to talk to him about what he's learned um, over the last couple pro- big, big projects that he's worked on and what he can share with, with all of you. So, John, welcome to the show today. Thank you very much for having me. So, John, uh, as we get started, we want to sort of get to know you a little bit before we get into the meat of this. So, if you could, could you just give everybody a little background about who you are and, uh, and what you do? Sure. JB in two minutes. <clears throat> so, uh, graduated in 2017. My first big boy job was out in Western North Carolina. So, they uh, I, at my first spot, uh, just kind of grew into responsibilities there. And my biggest responsibility was a water system qualification. So, uh, we used a bunch of water that we needed at a certain, uh, standard WIFI water for injection. And so we needed to go about how are we going to test this 40 million some dollar project and are we going to be okay about it? Uh, while there, I had a few other projects, and then I just recently um, got hired on at this firm called Amendo, where uh, we help our clients on several different things, be they uh, brand new facilities that they need to commission and qualify, or uh, existing facilities that need current and process needs. Excellent. Thank you for that. We're going get to get to know you a little bit more, I think, as we go, as we, we talk about what you did and what you learned while you were on those jobs. But before we do that, I want to ask one, one other question. I ask a number of my guests this. I, I'm not consistent, and I need to be. Um, but uh, So tell me about a book that you've recently read that you really enjoyed reading. Oh, man. Uh, the number one that I request to people is Atomic Habits. Um, if you haven't heard of that book, uh, there's a reason it was number one on the mm-hmm. Amazon bestseller list for I don't know how long. Is that James um, Clear? Yeah, James Clear is like the guy. All these gurus, there's a lot of gurus out there, and there are a few that I can morally align with uh, <laughs> over time. Like the more the more you get to know them, the more you're like you either polarize or uh, I am attracted to James Clear's moral like rod uh, like where he's going and the direction he's going for it like nothing uh, the dude is is really really powerful did he, um, did, he just write, for, did he write digital min- minimalism are you familiar? I don't know I think I'd be I think, I think he may have my, my daughter was just talking about that one I'm looking it up as we go. Oh, no, that's Cal Newport. Sorry. Close. Ah. Very, very close. It, so it's like, uh, it's just, yeah, James Clear is amazing. Um, for something else that has nothing to do with work uh, that I really enjoyed is Algorithms to Live By. So that's uh, super nerdy, if anyone's interested. It is the <laughs> computer science algorithms that we've used for crazy software and the technology revolution. And so the algorithms that we found, we as a humanity have found through those tests and through those optimizations, you bring them back to your life. So one example, one little nugget of knowledge is uh, you should never, ever, ever have files upon files, like folders within folders within folders on your computer. You should only ever save them in one spot and then only sort by date last modified. Because not only are you uh, getting the most recent stuff that you've used at the top, you never have to find anything. And the search uh, capacity of computers is amazing. Uh, And it is self-sorting. So not only is it optimal, but it self-sorts. So take that for what it's worth. That's that's a good one. It's it's funny. I feel like I've I've kind of gone the other way. I've always been a searcher, right? Like just use the search because it works so well. And, and then I see somebody's computer, like when we do these shared screens and you see these beautifully organized, you know, tink, 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 all the way in. I'm like, oh man, I'm really missing the mark. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and so what you're telling me is the computer would tell me to just, I don't need to do all that. So great. 
I love it. I'm going to read this book. Yeah. No, no ridiculously crazy desktops. You just, you have one, you have one file and you dump everything into that file. You ever, have you ever seen that you ever get the shared screen or somebody gives a presentation and you see their desktop and it's literally covered with files. (laughs) It just, (laughs) it bothered me before I understood that concept. Uh, Now I just see it as like, how on earth can you trust yourself to know, actually know where anything is or it, it's just, it's not. I always wonder what their kitchen looks like when I see that, you know, like, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So enough, enough about our desktops and our kitchens. Um, so, um, all right. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about um, some of your experience with commissioning and qualification of a, a, a really big, uh, one of the bigger systems in the world water system. Um, if you could, you had, you had talked to me in our, our call earlier that you, you really liked water, you really liked the water systems. So what is it about working on a water system that you thought was good? I obviously have a background in this. So this is kind of my space. Sure. I'd love to hear what, what your, what, why you think that. Yeah. So if, if you were to tell me on the way out of a biomedical engineering degree that I would become passionate about validation and more specifically validation on water, I'd be like, yeah, right. Like mm-hmm. I studied neuroscience, how the but how the body reacts to uh, implants. Um, I studied 3D modeling within the heart or whatever. And it I hit the real world and it's like, nope, you're gonna learn about water. So uh, <laughs> but it's been a total blast. Um, it's really, really fun. And I think w- the one advantage that water people have is that. Um, there is just enough similarities between systems where you can communicate with one another. So there's kind of cross pollination. Uh, but then there's also dis, uh, there's also intricacies or different details between systems that you can, you can keep learning. So uh, it's not, it's definitely not a cut and paste. Um, but it, there is enough to where you can kind of talk the same language with anyone that worked anywhere. Uh, but still have to be able to learn and teach each other. So I, I like that part a lot. All right. Yeah, that's it's funny that I didn't even realize that was your degree. That definitely seems like a long ways away from a biomedical engineering degree for sure. <laughs> but, you know, once you're an engineer, you're an engineer. So let's do this thing, right? Yeah. Awesome. So, all right. So um, one of the first questions I just want to get is sort of our set our baseline for this discussion is, um, is you had to come up with you know, a way to approach this commissioning and qualification of this very large system. So, um, and you're pretty, pretty young, pretty young guy. This isn't something you haven't done, you know, hundreds of hundreds of water systems. Like I know some people have, right. So, so it, it may have been overwhelming. It may not. So tell us about that task and what you, what you sort of did, how you had to outline it, maybe how you started to approach it differently than I guess maybe you would otherwise. Yeah. Uh, really good question. So I, th- I think it, it came in, it came in two waves. One was I needed to have the humility to know that I cannot, like, I cannot trust my gut and my own understanding to do this right. So learn from the best <laughs> and shamelessly copy success. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, the second I would say is, uh, because it was a unique problem meaning uh, systems like this do not come uh, once in a lifetime, really. And because it's a unique problem, it requires a unique solution. So if we did what we have always have done, uh, it would not have worked. So hmm. we, needed to, we needed to understand what the best in the world did and how can we apply that here? Because it's definitely going to be different than what we've done in the past just because the situation requires it. Hmm. Um, so how did you just that first point you had to, you, what are the best in the world do? So what, like, what does you do? How do you, how do you find out what are the, what is the best in the world do with a system like that? Yeah. I mean, first it takes a while. There's a high learning curve of mm-hmm. uh, being able to understand, but um, like I said before, how water systems have uh, enough similarities where you can teach each other uh, every, it, Every facility that needs water can understand water for injection. So uh, what I did is, okay, what is the most digestible pharmaceutical information that I can find Mm. regarding 
uh, water systems because if I if I went to ASME or BPE or whatever, it was clear that nerds were talking to nerds. Meaning, <laughs> like I've been on systems for thirty years, so I'm going to shove out as much uh, jargon as I possibly can at you, uh, and I'd get lost like all the time. So uh, after finding different sources, the one I found that was by far the most digestible to me was ISPE, the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineers, which is a bunch of people that have worked in this industry a while trying to help out each other. So um, yeah, I just, I just thought it was awesome. So I found, I honestly don't even know how I came up on it, but I found their uh, guidance from 2019 ISPE, uh, which is, it talks about commissioning and qualification volume two. Uh, and I got in it like six months after it came out and I was just pumped because I could mm -hmm. actually under, they, it seemed like they were actually talking English, but I was learning uh, and I, it actually, I could actually understand the concept uh, instead of getting lost in the details of every possible thing you could possibly do in a water system. Uh, was this specific to water systems, this, or was it generic commissioning qualification? Uh, totally, uh, completely generic. So it had nothing to do with any uh, systems. It had examples from process air specifically, um, yeah. but it was generically, regardless of the world that you're in, this is the kind of uh, process that they would suggest you go about. Uh, and I just got lost. Like I, <laughs> I, I, just try to breathe and memorize it all in of just what, what are they like? What, what is the strategy that they're talking about? Because these are the best that have been in the industry a while. Then they all come together and they say, this is what I believe. And they all agree on it. And then they deliver. Uh, and that should be our starting point mm -hmm. instead of trying, trying in a vacuum to master uh, something that may work for us in that specific problem. Anyway. Yeah, I loved it. That's great. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a, I don't know, is that a pretty new, yeah, so that's from June 2019. So that is a, that's the, the most recent one. So that's probably what you were working from. Um, yeah, right. and this is, yeah, these are all available on the ISPE website. Um, and they have these kind of guidance documents for all sorts of things. And they have like three, I think three different water ones, um, water yep. or steam ones. So uh, not specifically for commissioning qualification, but in for all different parts of, of those systems. So Awesome. Yeah, so actually, I actually, so at least from the first one that I had, I found one that was specific to commissioning and qualification of water and steam systems. Yep. So I yep. was, the first one was general of like, okay, first you got to, I understood the concept. Now the application of that concept minus a few years because the commissioning qualification water systems actually came out after, uh, before this new version. Right. So it was kind of like back backtracking, um, but it would, again, very helpful. But if you didn't understand the first layer, uh, you could get lost in the second layer, not with the water system, but if you try to apply that to other worlds, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to fall. You know, what's interesting is if you, um, if you, if you're part of ISBE and you belong to any of the, um, the little, the little groups. So there's a group called critical utilities in the i on the isp website and people have discussions and they'll ask questions and people answer them and everything and what i find interesting over and over and over again is that um people <clears throat> ask questions or have assumptions based on stuff that their companies that they belong to or companies that they have belonged to in the past have done and then they push that back down and go is this the right way to do it you know we have to do it this way. And then there's a, a number of people that are always there, seem to answer the questions really well. And they're really versed in, in these documents. Um, you know, I think of a, the guy that's up here in the North, Northeast named Brian Hagopian. He's been on multiple of these committees. He'll answer questions. Um, Nissan Cohen, there's different, different guys that do it. And they're always like, you don't need to do that. That's not what you do. Like you're pull it way back. Like that you're, you're way over, way overthinking it. Right. Like, um, and, and that sometimes they're way under thinking it to be, to be honest, like it's, it's not like everybody is always overdoing it. Sometimes they're way underdoing it, but, but I have been surprised at how often the answer is you guys, like, you don't need to do that. You're, you're killing yourself in order to, you know, try to make this work. This is the guidance. This is from thousands of plants all over the world doing the same thing as you. Why are you reinventing that wheel? 
So um, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I, I love, I love reading those things. Um, excellent. So, um, so as, as, so, so that's what you did. You, you pull it back, you go and you find, you know, the world experts and, and do it the right way. Um, and yep. I mean, that's, that's not necessarily life changing there, but like, let's talk specifically. So what did this mean for you? Um, how were, were you approaching this? Uh, you, you're, you're from the quality perspective, right? So, yep. so as you're defining this, like, what are, what are the things that you started to care about? Yeah. So, uh, the, what became clear is you, uh, you need to work from your desired output of your system back. So the desired output of the water system that we had was water for injection, which means water of a certain quality that meets four, I'm going to call them CQAs, critical quality attributes. So they are uh, endotoxin, TOC, conductivity, and micro. So at all times, these are the things that I, I am measuring throughout my system to prove or uh, troubleshoot whether where my problems are. So my the goal of the system is provide water that meets that four things of uh, those four things throughout the system. Uh, so I had going into it, I can't know what those are, right? So I I from ISP I got to understand. Uh, not only what a CQA is, meaning a physical, chemical, biological, or microbiological property or characteristic that should be within an appropriate limit or range. So like, I didn't know what a CQA was. Now I understand what it was. And what are they for water? It's those four. And so from there, like, okay, uh, what's, your, what's your level two or the step beneath that of uh, your system needs to be able to control certain parameters that have a direct impact on those CQAs. So uh, for water, it, especially micro, which is a big um, focus point throughout water and throughout the world, uh, is you need to prove that you sanitize your system at a certain frequency and a certain duration over a certain temperature. So you, your CPPs are how frequently you sanitize and uh, over a certain temperature and how long you sanitize. So your sanitization frequency and your sanitization duration. Uh, as you may or may not know, there is no such thing as a perfect dead leg free system. By dead leg, I mean a, a section of pipe that is not recirculating. So what you don't want is pipe that is stuck in a, a water that is stuck in a pipe and it's just sitting there because mm -hmm. stagnant that, water yep. right stagnant water um so you either want it dry or above a turbulent flow uh so bugs don't land and multiply so i had my i had my goal my outputs of the system cqas and i had the things i could control cpps and then Everything else is something called a CDA. So these are uh, critical design aspects. So these are functions, features, abilities, uh, performance, or a characteristic of the system necessary. So I know I can make my outputs. Uh, and this, these should sound very similar or very familiar to anyone that's worked in pharma before. Uh, slope and materials of construction and service finish, whatever. So that, that process of breaking down uh, from my desired output down made it so much more clear to me of what mattered as a, from a quality perspective, which allowed freedom for my engineers on the team uh, to understand. So uh, maybe I can clarify that a little more. Um, a, a problem within my, the industry that I see right now is when you loop in a quality person, the uh, more the getting past them exponentially increases, like the difficulty to get past them or get their signature exponentially increases over time. So, uh, or <laughs> with the complexity of the project, with so exposure to the more system. you involve, yeah, right, or their exposure, right? Yeah. So if they've had, uh, if they've had 
uh, a day of exposure versus um, versus a week versus a year. Like the newer and newer they are, the harder and harder it is to convince them like what we're doing is okay. Uh, so the same thing goes for engineers running the project, meaning they have, sh it's controlled chaos trying to run a project. Uh, you've got budgets and supply chains, especially during COVID. Uh, you've got uh, design changes that you need to make. You need to report to management how the heck it's going. You've got deadlines or whatever. And there's all of these different things. Um, and a common wrench in the system is a quality person that doesn't truly understand water start making demands late into the project and now your host just your, your budget dies your your deadline extends but the the quality person digs their heels in because they're not uh comfortable with what's happening for whatever reason it may be because it's wrong but more than likely it's because they're not educated as to like what they should actually care about so um, can i just i'm going to just interject really quick so we have our cqa sure. cpp cdas they just sort of flow yep. like if you the number of things should be the least amount of cqas more cpps more cdas right it should be like a like a pyramid right in, in close in some, to yes in some ways yeah um, and then on the cqas like is that all the quality cares about is the CQAs or they care about the stuff below it? Can you can you talk to that? Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great point. Um, so everything that I would dump into one of those three buckets, quality is concerned and quality is uh, should be concerned not concerned about should be interested in and prove that it is there. But anything outside of that, uh, quality doesn't care. Uh, quality shouldn't care. Okay, uh, and they may not know that and they may not recognize that, but uh, let, me, let me give an example so I can uh, explain it a little better. Um, with my, with, if I am making a change on a piece of pipe and I have to, uh, let's say I have to cut into it uh, because a weld broke for whatever reason, there's a leak. So I cut into the pipe, and I put in a new pipe and I redo my welds. So I have to prove that my surface finish is nice and shiny on the inside and that I'm flushed after the change and that my materials of construction are such that they are non-reactive with uh, water or non-reactive or like 316L or 316 um, stainless steel just because we've shown over time, that's the best stuff to have in the water system. Anyway, yep. uh, quality should care about those CDAs. Is my surface finish and my materials construction uh, done. Outside of that, of what color is the pipe or uh, um, how, uh, what's, a good, what's another example? It's like, um, when did they weld it? or how long did it take them? Or was the equipment that we were using to weld this weld qualified or whatever? Like it just goes into a rabbit hole. Um, and that's a harsh example, but I, there's uh, more relevant things out there. But what, what I'm trying to show is that um, the better quality understands what's in those three buckets, meaning the CQAs, the CPPs and the CDAs, or the desired output of the system, the parameters that we can control, and the design functions, features, abilities, uh, or characteristics that go into the design to make sure we meet the output consistently. Uh, if we can understand those three buckets, everyone else's life is, life is better because there isn't that debate of crap. Now we got a rope in quality to educate them as to why they should or should not uh, care about something or sign off on something uh, it's because they just the quality person really really understands the outputs the cqas the cpps and the cdas what's in their bucket so if you have uh, you have these cqas that are pertinent we're gonna we're talking about a water system so pertinent to the to the wifi system um where's the limit of of how that applies is it just with it like like where do we get to an edge where that 
where those CQAs matter or don't matter anymore, right? Because you could, yeah. you could potentially in a water system, you could be making, uh, you could have, you have all these process steps that go into water, right? So in a lot of plants, you have, you have, uh, you have a carbon filter, a, a multimedia filter, a carbon filter, a softener, an RO, a CDI, a tank, uh, you know, another loop that you have, but then you might have the, the WIFI, what a WIFI still either um, multi-effect or vapor compression. And then that right. is going into another tank. And then that's your distribution loop where the water is actually going to touch something that matters. Right. So like you yep. work your way back through that process chain, you might actually be making uh, water that meets all these CQA requirements, right? The micro and the endotoxin right long before it ever gets to the still <laughs> right um so do, so do they care about i mean because hey you're meeting those do they care all the way back there from a quality perspective or does it push out like where do you draw the line yeah that's a great question uh a common like a common debate of like when is it critical and when does it matter and how the heck am I supposed to know? Because someone that left six years ago knew everything and they could tell me, I have no idea. So help me out. Um, a tool to understand this is, uh, is we're lucky enough to have received it. It's called a system impact assessment or a system classification uh, from ISPE. So the whole point of this assessment is they have improve this from their version in 2014 into 2019, where they give you nine questions for you to uh, answer. And if you can answer, if you answer yes to any of those questions, it is in your quality boundary, meaning your quality group should care and should be involved with what's going on. If you say no to all nine of those questions, it is a it is not in the quality box. So to give a little bit more detail, uh, these nine questions ans uh, ask uh, very specific things like, are there critical design aspects within your system? And if you don't understand what a CDA is, your instinct will be, oh no, not uh, of course not. It's like no, if you have to really understand what your CQA is and how it's impacted by your CPPs and your CDAs. And uh, in order for you to answer that question. Uh, another one is, um, does the system provide an environment wherein ma uh, manufacturing of your product uh, is done in a safe manner? So um, a, great, a great gray area uh, for pharmaceutical industry is, is pest control. So the, uh, your pest control system is and should be part of the quality boundary. You're either paying the price because some bug made it into your facility and now you're adopting that into your into your procedures or you're trying to pay you're trying to play defense of trying to make sure that no bugs of any kind can get into your facility. Um, can I can I ask real quick? Can I ask real quick? So I'm yeah, a water sure. I'm water only. That's what I've done for a long time. So Pest control. Yeah. Are we talking about all the way down to bugs in your water? Are you talking about mosquitoes getting in your building? Are we talking about mice on the floor? Just, just curious. That could, uh, that could happen. Um, but I'm just talking br broadly on a facility. You have defense mechanisms to keep bugs out of any kind. So it could be rodents, could be mice, uh, could be um, gnats, could be mosquitoes, whatever. Like it totally depends on the facility, what the risks you have, where you are the season, whatever. Um, so I'm just talking on a broad scope, the uh, pest control in, uh, system is a defense mechanism. So as you go through, like, I, I, I try to point it out because you have these nine questions delivered to you and you have to say yes to at least one of those when it comes to pest control. And so what usually People on the outside looking in is like, how the heck is that in your quality boundary? Like, why do you care about bug traps and a rat trap outside your doors? Like, like why does that matter? It's like, well, because the tool that ISP gave us helps us better understand how we can best uh, classify the systems within our building. Uh, 
So this this tool is uh, with these nine questions. You if it is if you say yes to any of them, it is called a direct impact system. And if you say no to all of them, it is a uh, not direct impact system. Because I think it, another thing that um, quality is prone to is we start, uh, we put our defenses and put our fingers out as, as far as we possibly can um, because we just want to be extra safe, extra cautious because de depending on the product that we're making, our patients' lives are on the line. Uh, so I think um, instead of Instead of for every NCR, we grow the quality boundary. And for every finding that we get uh, from the FDA, if we have any, um, we grow the quality boundary. We just get really, really ridiculously good at understanding what the CQAs are, what the CPPs are with respect to our system, and what our CDAs are. So to finally answer your question you had before, the way you do it is by, sorry, long, long loop. I'm coming back, I promise. Uh, the the way you do it is have one have a tool to determine whether or not it's a direct impact system or a not direct impact system and if it is if it is direct impact you need to you need to be able to scientifically and on a risk with a risk based approach define where your boundary is so uh, uh, for us the uh, you, we had a still and the, uh, each still was different depending on which one it was. And the product contact point was different for each still. So we, the, I wouldn't say on the way into the still is when quality, like is if it's from this valve into the still, I quality shouldn't care about it yet. It's more the operational side or the business side of things of just like those systems prior to the still are helping the still do its job or the longevity of the still, not affecting the quality of water coming out of the still because the still is so robust in what it does. That's why it's been uh, in our industry for so long. It, it does really good job uh, at um, providing the water that we need of that of the quality that we need. Um, so I wouldn't say it's where you meet the CQAs per se. Um, I would say it's where do you definitely need to meet your CQAs uh, of wherever they are. So if you can provide with equality water prior to your last process point, good on you. Like, nice job. You're under control for, from what I can hear, from what I can understand now. Uh, but that doesn't mean quality's boundary uh, should just continue to extend further and further upstream. Um, just get really, really good um, at understanding what's in your bucket. Okay, so I'm just gonna gonna wrap that up. So you have CQAs that apply at a certain point, right? Yep. So, so yep. we're just gonna say for the purposes of this discussion, there's a point, you know, after the water come goes to steam and then comes back to back to water, right? And it's called distillate at that point. There's some right. point right there, right in that region where it is now like this is where we would sample on the generation system quality wise and say this is where it has to meet these different CQAs. And then all the different CPPs and CDAs that flow out of that in order to serve and make sure that those CQAs uh, are always being met would would are, are those things that are only that this is kind of what I was getting at those things only from that point forward or do those things reach back into the process as well yeah that's yeah that's right it's only that point forward and this is because uh before that point they are not critical meaning critical to quality they may have an impact on the business or yield or on our, our equipment but uh that word critical should only be applied to something within the quality bucket. So we have critical quality attributes, critical process parameters, critical design aspects. Uh, anything above that, that is a, or uh, upstream of that, that is a function or a feature or some, some characteristic is simply an aspect or a, an attribute 
of the water in between or a parameter. It is not a critical parameter and it is not something that's critical to our process. So it's, it's, um, it is just a parameter. And uh, ISPE is suggesting, and I'm totally jumping on the bandwagon because I think it's amazing. You only do qualification activities, meaning IQ, OQ, PQ, for systems that are direct impact and uh, CPPs and CDAs. So anything within your quality bucket, that is what you do qualifications on. So those tests need to meet GDP, GXP. Commissioning does not, unless you are leveraging. So if you don't plan on leveraging it for any of your anything within your quality bucket, quality doesn't need to be involved and qualifications and validation protocols, um, they, they, it's, it's a waste of your time. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> We have different experience in like how that actually plays out. And, uh, you know, I get to deal with lots of different customers and you see how they approach it all differently. So uh, it's that's a it's an interesting take on that. I'm, I'm actually interested to, to see if maybe some people that I know from around the industry will will comment on this ultimately and maybe maybe leave some opinions or some thoughts on this. So 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 one of the things I, I, I wrote down as a question and we, we really pretty much knock this to death at this point, but um, it seems like it's just super important to define these boundaries. Um, and then how, how, how do you de defend them? How do you, how do you defend them? Like everybody's got their, their little, you know, fortress and how do you defend those boundaries and, and keep them and, and keep people from sort of traveling upstream and going after stuff that is probably just going to make things more difficult ultimately. Yeah. Um, Carefully, is how I'd say. <laughs> uh, but I, and I'm beating to the death, this to death, and I'm sorry, but it's the the idea is the better you are at understanding the science and risk behind that, or the layers beneath your CQA CPPs you will be able to catch anything that will directly impact quality. So um, there's like, I, ha I haven't even gotten into this yet, but there's a whole set of, well, John, what the heck do you do about the control system? Uh, well, that the only thing that I would say that because it's a different world, it's not necessarily the water system, it's the brains behind operating the water system. So your uh, design aspects are functions or features related to critical alarms. So if you, uh, you need to prove that you meet your CPPs, if it's been too long between sanitizations, uh, that's a, uh, a feature of your control system is telling you, Hey, it's been too long or whatever. Um, so the way you defend it is just really, really understand and know that what your CQAs are, what your CPPs are, and how they affect your CQAs, and what your CDAs are, and how those affect. So they, the, um, the better you are at understanding that, uh, and understanding what those are, the easier everything else is. Because for every change, your assessment can be as simple as, does it affect anything within my quality bucket? Meaning, does it affect a direct impact system? No. Quality doesn't need to be involved. Okay, well, does it affect a direct impact system? Yes, okay. Does it affect any of the th any of my CQA, CPPs, or CDAs? Meaning, am I changing any of those? No, change approved. Uh, if our assessment is wrong and it did affect one of those things, you're going to catch it. And then you have the then you have the discussion of we said that this change would not impact something within those three buckets. It turns out it did. We can either now we need to investigate. We either add that to our quality boundary or uh, but be really careful because you shouldn't add everything under the sun that could possibly impact quality or has in the past once or uh, 
very, very rarely impacted quality. You care about what is directly impacting the quality of your system, not, um, not all the hypothetical rabbit holes that you can go down on everything, nor the, because you've had the system for 40, 50 years, and once upon a time, you remember decades ago that X, Y, Z happened, uh, that you should be monitoring that now. It's, it's, it's about just being really, really good um, with your bucket. So I, I have a, an example of this where I remember it at a, at a customer it being kind of an issue like this. There was, there was a still and we were troubleshooting. We were getting some funny readings on the output. So that would like connectivity. So the connectivity would be a CQA that they're, they're looking at, right? Um, right. It is at least as, as long as we're talking about it, ISPE. So they were getting a bad connectivity. And we're like, it's, you know, based on everything we tell, it was something was coming through upstream of, of the WIFI system. Um, and we didn't know what it was and we, we couldn't tell and testing takes forever. It, you know, it's not something you just, you know, do and then you, you have the answer. It might take days potentially sometimes. Um, and so we had a couple different pretreatment trains, right? And we're like, well, why don't we just switch it over to the other pretreatment train and see if the problem goes away because I mean, none of that has to do technically with the quality of the, of the Wi-Fi, Right. And the answer was, Nope, no, 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 we cannot do that because it's um, that's a, that's a different system. And I know in my own head and I don't do commissioning, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like that, like the pretreatment more than anything is protection for the, the, the still um and it's getting ready for it to do its process right um and so it shouldn't matter which pretreatment train we use because there 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 are no C if you i didn't i didn't have that language at the time but there there are no cqas for any of that stuff so right. why would and and the the thing was quality will never let us do that that was the that was sort of the feedback quality will never let us do that <laughs> And we're like, well, it, does, it shouldn't matter, right? And at the end of the right. day, we were throwing it to the drain anyway. So it wasn't like we were putting it into a, a storage tank for, a, for, for medicine, right? Um, but that was, that was um, in my experience, that was like a really good example of like, that, that should, they should have nothing to do with this decision as we're throwing something down the drain. Um, yep. And it was, it was very frustrating. And it added, I'll tell you, man, it, it added so much time to the troubleshooting you know, project, we, we could have, we could have knocked out a few really big potential issues or, or options uh, for our problem, like, like so fast, but instead it, right. you know, it was days. Right. And it was all just because they're worried that, you know, quality fingers would be in this and have a problem with it. So interesting. Yeah. That just, that just hints at, that just hints to me two things. One, uh, the quality group does not understand their water system as bet as well as they could. They understand it, I'm sure, and they're being careful for a reason, which I'm I as a potential patient of that group, I'm really grateful for. But me as a an employee of the uh, pharmaceutical industry, I I see that there is distrust there, um, uh, and um, there may be a reason. They may have gotten burned in the past. Like I totally I, I get it. Um, but it's because quality doesn't understand what's in their bucket and what they, what they need to understand is, uh, the only thing like what you need to prove is, do you have good conductivity water at your, at this point on and everything else above stream, like you caught it great. They're like, that's what quality is supposed to do. But the stuff upstream of you, like you don't need to prove that like quality doesn't need to prove that it, um, that it consistently improves with each step. Like that's, that's the, like the, the goal is, do I have good water at this point? Yes, great. The business side of, of pharma is how do I help my stills do their job? And so I agree, they should have used a different pretreatment train. Um, and then um, that may have helped on, on figuring out what's wrong. Um, but the, the, in the instinct of saying, oh, quality will never less do that, uh, just means they've had similar problems before where the conservative, uh, style of be super careful quality people that act, don't actually understand 
what matters with that system um, is a, as a perfect example of, uh, and yeah, perfect example. Yeah, it is. And again, I, I just to make it easy, if somebody knows anything about water, the, the, the conductivity is the number. That's the number that we care about. We don't yep. care about hardness, right? Now, right. we kind of do care about hardness because if you have a bunch of hardness in your WIFI, there's a problem, but there's other, these other things are going to catch that. Like they're, they're uh, indicative of this other issue, right? And in, 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 in an example like this, we're trying to remove hardness to make the still run more efficiently over a long period of time so that it doesn't scale up and all that other stuff, which would ultimately affect quality. Um, but it technically wouldn't. You just end up with a, a really scaled up uh, generator. And so, so the fact that hardness is zero after a softener isn't a quality thing. It's a, right. like you're saying, it's a, it's a business thing, not a quality thing. And if you do that That's really right. well on the business end, your quality is going to take care of itself and That's the business right. and the business of that thing is going to take care, care of itself. So you don't end up spending <laughs> way too much money on it. So, um, yeah. all right. We, we, I think, we've, I think I was gonna say, we've yeah. covered that okay. pretty well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like this really made it crystal clear for me. This isn't something that I do day in and day out. And so it's, it's pretty neat to be able to talk through it. And, um, and help helps me when I talk to my customers or when I talk to, you know, people that end up working on our systems to understand this better. I, I like that. So, um, so what I'd like to do just sort of to close this out um, as we've, you know, sort of work, work through this and how you, you approach this at one of your customers. And um, if I will, I think when we talked about this, this was something that you came to do on one system, right? Um, right. Now, was this something that they were already doing? Was it, and you just sort of were jumping on board or was it something that you were kind of redefining for them? And if you did, like, what was the outcome of that? Like, are you talking the strategy about how we went about uh, commissioning qualification? Yeah, exactly. So like you, you, you're, you're talking about how you got to where you needed to do this project. Right. And um, was that something that was already in place or, it was maybe a little frazzled and all over the place. And then if you were able to bring this in, you did it for this project. Has, has it gone on to do other stuff or? Yeah. So um, it definitely wasn't in place. It, it was at that, at that point in time, um, the, the only thing that we knew for sure was a new distribution system requires qualification protocols and a lot of them. So go figure it out. Uh, but after being able to understand this strategy of, okay, this is, this is what's in my bucket and qualification protocols, meaning good GXP testing is only the stuff within my quality bucket. Uh, taking that strategy and seeing the success of how we met our deadlines, we stayed within budget. Like there were still, there were definitely, um, hurdles to still overcome, but the smoothness of the project, especially um, just caught it, like it inspired several other projects to take on the same thing. So I was able to take that same strategy and um, apply it site-wide. So regardless of the world that you're in, be it test methods, be it chem labs uh, or equipment qualification or, um, Computer system validation, it, like it doesn't matter the world that you're in because all of us are helping in one way or another, a very large science experiment. Uh, and the strategy about how we go commissioning and qualificate and qualifying those systems or methods or whatever it is, uh, is can be the same. And that is you use a system impact assessment you define what your CQA, CPPs, and CDAs are, and you just memorize those suckers, have them on the back of your hand on just a list. Literally, every if you're a quality person, you're walking around with that list at all times. All right, so uh, we stick, we're sticking that little sticky note up on the monitor for every day you're at work. Like, <laughs> come on, just stick to your, stick to the, the, the plan here. Yeah, St yeah. yeah stick to the sticky. <laughs> it's like me, just smile and nod, Jesse, smile and nod. That's what I got to do. Yeah, well, um, yeah. All right. Awesome. So as we, um, as we close this out, um, I, maybe you already, maybe you already did this, but you know, what's, what's the number one thing that you would 
you would tell or encourage a CQV team to do as they embark on a, a new system? Yeah, um, I would, uh, and Jesse will provide this too. So if you're listening to this, I'm going to give Jesse the nine questions I got for my SPE. You can, and just a caveat, you can either pay for these um, documents or, uh, and it's like something like 500 bucks for non-members. Um, but that doesn't mean you'll understand them. Uh, if you can, awesome. Like, great. If you've got the time, if you've got the energy, like take them down. Awesome. Um, most likely you will need a guided effort. Uh, so if, if any CQV team is out there listening to this, um, I would either A, uh, find ISP and, and read it, uh, or B, I take this system classification that Jesse's got and he'll hand it out to you um, here in a bit. And if you're listening to this, you'll, you'll find a way to get it. And that is, that is your starting point. That's your gateway into uh, being able to re like redefine how your quality group goes about, um, goes about your entire thing. So uh, I'd, say, I'd say that shamelessly copy success through ISPE. If you don't have the budget for that, um, congratulations on listening for this. You've got the starting point um, on how to get there, which will give you insight as to um, how you should define your quality bucket. Excellent. Well, thanks so much. That was, that was, this is really good. I felt like I, you know, um, I, I'm going to say this, but you're, you're, you're kind of a younger engineer. You make me feel a little bit old and uh, you did an awesome job on this project. It sounds like, and it's pretty fresh, you know, this whole experience of coming from not really knowing to going through and doing a really big system is is really fresh on your mind and you've moved on and now you're doing other projects that are similar. So I feel like having just gone through that whole experience on your own or, or with a small team is, is really valuable. And it's not the same as sometimes when you come into a big mega system, you know, as just a new dude, you know, engineer, and they just say, do this, do this, do this. And you're like, okay, okay, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, sure, I got it, right? Um, yep. you owned it a little bit more, uh, probably. And I, I really, I really like that. So John, thanks for being on here today. I appreciate it. i glad to have you. No and I look forward to sharing this with everybody for anybody that's listening. We're going to have, um, all these things that he was just talking about these ISPE resources and whatnot, um, in the show notes. So we look forward to sharing those with you. So thanks for being on today, John. No problem.